How did I get into this mess? You know that feeling you get when you're really excited for something, only to get completely let down by it like a snap in the chest? Yeah, I've come across a few games that gave me that disappointment, but not to make a list of that. So for my first countdown, I'm going to count down the 10 games that I was really excited for, only to be let down harder than Giovanni with the Team Rock Trail. As always, standard rules apply only one per franchise and only games I actually play. Also, if you happen to like any of the games I put on here, please don't rant about it in the comment section. We have different opinions, and I don't need any petty hate filling up the comments on my videos. Lastly, I'm going to get really fightful in this video, so you'd best leave if you're easily offended or frightened. You know what's that though. Time for the guy my play! Oh! Oh, it hurts! These symptoms, could it be... Oh, it's you that's causing my suffering! Then if I tear you to pieces, the pain will stop! Bandai Namco has made plenty of great games during their gaming career. We've got Pac-Man, Dig Dug, Tekken, and Soul Calibur to name a few. But even they aren't immune to mistakes, as the first game on this list will explain. The Tower of Turagan can best be summed up as The Legend of Zelda version 0.5 Beta. The plot basically amounts to Princess Key getting kidnapped by the titler Draga from the event of her game, The Quest of Key. Given the release date of this game, I can let this slide, but even if the story wasn't basic, the controls are just garbage! Controlling Gilgamesh feels sluggish and awkward, and finding enemies is next to impossible. Your goal at each floor is to get a key to unlock the door to the next floor, but because of the bad controls, and the fact that the key spawns in a random area, you'll have to be lucky to get past floor 5 in a game with 60 floors! But even with all that said, the Tower of Turaga isn't too atrocious to the point that I would hate it, and I can still appreciate a few elements in the game, so that saves it from being any higher. Still, this game's mediocrity didn't keep me interested, and I ended up moving on to better games. Oh, it's you that's causing my suffering! Then if I tear you to pieces, the pain will stop! The PlayStation 1 is one of my favorite consoles of all time, and one of my most nostalgic memories. I had plenty of fun with several games on this console, including Back by 7 and Tetris Plus. That being said, one PlayStation 1 game I did not have fun with is Frogger 2 Swami's Revenge. I'm not a big fan of the Frogger series to begin with, but even then, this game was a huge letdown. For starters, the story, while not horrible, is still kind of basic. Long story short, some Frogger girl named Swami raids some pond and kidnaps several baby frogs, and accept the Frogger and newcomer Lily Frog to save all of them. Not bad, but still not good. However, one thing about Frogger 2 that is bad is the controls, because like Tower of Draga, they're outright putrid. The controls feel stiff, clunky, and sometimes even unresponsive, costing the players hundreds upon hundreds of lives. Lastly, I need to give special mention to what the back of the box says. This is the best Frogger ever? No! You don't advertise games with the slogan, BEST GAME EVER! Like I said, I'm not into the Frogger series that much, and this game may be even less interested. Oh, it's you that's causing my suffering! Then if I tear you to pieces, the pain will stop! Candy Crush is a really popular game on the internet. While I personally wasn't interested in it, even the slightest bit, in the early 10s, developer King struck a deal with Microsoft to install the game into any computers that upgraded to Windows 10, including mine. Taking into consideration how viral the game was, I decided to try it. And honestly, I wasn't seeing it. This is more of a personal pick for me, I don't think it's all personal, but who cares? But Candy Crush isn't my type of game. Its situation is the exact same as Frogger 2's for me. I wasn't interested in the series to begin with, and this game made me less interested. I wasn't really excited by the game's art style of humor, and the gameplay, while not horrible, is slightly limiting. You can only swap candy, this game's game pieces, with adjacent candies, and power-ups really aren't the necessary. But that's not the worst part. That would be how Candy Crush handled its microtransactions. If you fail a level, use the life like in most games. Lives are replenished every half hour until you have 5 lives, or if you're impatient, you can borrow some from a friend or spend real money if you don't have any friends. That's fine with me. Here's what's not fine. Alongside lives, you can also buy power-ups to make levels easier, 
However, the currency used to buy them also costs real money, and unlike lives, the only alternative, which is clearing certain levels, is limited, so if you've already cleared every level or are stuck on one, you can't make the level any easier unless you pay! How in the world is that fair? Oh wait, it isn't. I'm gonna need to see a dentist after this. Oh, it's you that's causing my suffering! Then if I tear you to pieces, the pain will stop! Ah, Skylanders, an overheated series accused of ruining a nostalgic purple dragon. While I will admit I have never played a classic Sparrow game in my life, I really enjoyed the first Skylanders game on the Nintendo Wii. I later learned that the game would also get ported to the Nintendo 3DS, so I decided to get that version as well. A decision I wholeheartedly regret. <sighs> as overheated as the console Skylanders games are, the 3DS versions deserve every ounce of negative attention they get, and I might as well read about the first 3DS Skylanders game in Sparrow's Adventure. The first problem? The version that people look for in a game like Spyro is a great cast of characters. The console Skylanders games definitely delivered on that with memorable characters like Fun and Hugo. On the other hand, the 3DS version has Hector, the Land Floating Hand, and five random guys who he had kidnapped. It didn't even include Chaos, the main villain of the series, and the whole reason why the Skylanders is a bunch of action figures to begin with. Seriously, game! As for the story, I'm not even gonna bother with it since it's forgettable, stupid, and overall boring. At least the controls are at least decent, and in a few areas, even better than the console version. But still, if you're interested in the Skylanders series, stick with the console games. Oh, it's you that's causing my suffering! Then if I tear you to pieces, the pain will stop! Pokemon Mystery Dungeon has got to be one of my favorite series of all time. I love every game in the series, even Games Infinity for what they all share in common. The stories are deep and even disturbing at some point, the characters were well fleshed out, and the gameplay felt fluid and adventurous. For my enjoyment with these games, I decided to purchase games similar to this. Unfortunately, one of these games will turn out to be the exact opposite of Mystery Dungeon. <sighs> Fatal Labyrinth, or as I call it, Fatal Dumpster, is outdated on so many levels. First problem? One of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon's biggest selling points is the variety of dungeons that the player in his or her party could explore, having around 50 or so dungeons. How many dungeons does Fatal Dumpster have? One. Just. One. The only dungeon in this game is the dragon's 31 floor tower, where he guards a sacred artifact he abducted literally called the Holy Goblet. There is problem number two right after that. The story is absolutely stupid. But even without that problem, there's still several things about this game that just don't work at all. In the only dungeon in the game, the collectibles range from your typical weapons and armor to scrolls of wands used to cast spells. However, none of the weapons or spells in the game were any good, with some of them even being harmful, and if you end up dying, you end up having to start from the last floor that's multiple of five. There's also a currency mechanic in this game, but there's nothing to buy rendering it absolutely pointless with the only thing it affects being the game over screen. So, yeah, Fatal Dumpster is absolutely outdated and it's not worth your time or money. Oh, it's you that's causing my suffering! Then if I tear you to pieces, the pain will stop! Hey, Fatal Dumpster isn't the only old geezer on here. I know some people are going to hate this choice, but I'm pinning Smash 1 on the list. Hey, there's a reason the nostalgia line and praise Smash 2 instead of its predecessor. Back on topic though, Super Smash Bros. is one of the I call First Game Syndrome. What do I mean? Well, this game has several problems that future games and in some cases remakes would go on to fix. Need an example? Let me make a comparison for you. As of the final update, Super Smash Bros. 4, the latest game in the series, has a roster of 58 playable characters. The original, on the other hand, only has 12. I know I'm comparing a pebble to a boulder here, but there's still more I need to talk about. Besides 80% of the roster, Super Smash Bros. 1 also likes several items, including the Smash Ball. In other words, you cannot activate final smashes in this game! Honestly, when I got this game on the Wii's virtual console, I didn't feel satisfied with my purchase at all. Unlike Fatal Labyrinth, I wouldn't call Super Smash Bros. 1 a bad game, but compared to the later games in the series, you really shouldn't waste your money on this one. Oh, it's you that's causing my suffering! Then if I tear you to pieces, the pain will stop! Oh dear, now I have to talk about Pokemon Rumble. Uh, why was this game made? When this game was announced back in 2009, I was really excited to get to fight Horus and Horus of Pokemon and take on the 20 Pokemon tournament. I did everything I could to add this game to my Wii library, but honestly, that has got to be one of my biggest mistakes ever because this game is trash! 
First off, let's just get the obvious out of the way. This game just looks hideous. We games really aren't over the graphics, but even with that in mind, the graphics in this game are just blocky and not pretty to look at. If I have to make a comparison, the graphics in this game are reminiscent of a late Nintendo 64 game, so these graphics are about a decade behind in terms of consoles. But this game wouldn't be this high if it were just the graphics. Oh no. The choices in this box are also extremely lazy. All they did was throw out the Pokemon from the second and third generations, and only include the Pokemon from the first and fourth generations. I don't like when Pokemon games submit certain Pokemon to begin with, but even then, they could have made more accurate choices than these. Thankfully, Pokemon Rumble Blast and the Nintendo 3DS fixed nearly every problem that the original had and left the real foundation for future installments in the series. This game, on the other hand, is better off Rumble. Oh, it's you that's causing my suffering! Then if I tear you to pieces, the pain will stop! Back in the late zeros, I enjoyed a DSi program called Flipnote Studio. I had tons of fun making Flipnotes and watching the works of others. So when it was announced that Nintendo would make a 3DS version of Flipnote Studio, you could bet I got really excited. And if you couldn't tell already, it really disappointed me. I'll admit, I'm cheating here since Flipnote Studio 3D technically isn't a game, but it was still a huge disappointment and I still feel the need to rant about it. The main issue with this game is an omission of one of the original game's key features, that being the game's online mode Flipnote Antenna. Flipnote Antenna let people share their Flipnotes with other viewers around the world. In Flipnote Studio 3D, there's no such thing. When the game was initially released in Japan, there was a similar feature, but it was taken down because some dirtbags posted inappropriate content on the servers. Honestly, that omission alone is what got this game this high, but even then, there were still a few nitpicks that I didn't appreciate. The new features felt slightly confusing to me, and the Flipnotes really did feel 3D. I don't know, I guess I grew out of it. Still, even with all that said, while I found Flipnote Studio 3D to be a bigger disappointment, I didn't find it to be as bad as some of the past gamers on this list, and I can still recommend it if you want to get creative. It's a shame I can't say the same with the last two games on this list. Oh, it's you that's causing my suffering! Then if I tear you to pieces, the pain will stop! I hate this game. I really hate this game. Don't know if it's gonna be one of the worst games I have ever had the displeasure of experiencing! The 3DS has had its fair share of idiocracies, but this is more than quite the line! Weapon wrong here? Oh, where do I start? How about I match the voice acting? This has gotta be some of the worst voice acting I have ever heard in my life! In Tomonash Life, you get to give me several features including voice to get the personality, but in reality, it just makes it feel bland. I mean, who in the world talks and acts like this? I'm Christy. I try to always stay positive and keep a smile on my face. Am I really hearing this? This is planned as incarnate! But aside from the voice, I think another problem I have is the RNG, or random number generator for short. Randomness is frustrating in several games, particularly party games, but this game is easily one of the worst offenders. The request for me is asked who they want to be with, and several other fly relevant features in the game are decided purely by the game with almost no input from the player. Nothing in this game gives the player control. And considering that's the whole point of a video game, that's just insulting. And at least we've trouble gonna help turn things around in why do I even bother anymore? There's honestly plenty of problems I haven't talked about this piece of garbage like the game marriage controversy and the celebrity ad, but I think I've already got my point across clearly now. But to be honest, I would much rather be playing this game and this game only for all eternity than even think about looking at the last entry ever again. Alright, I need to calm down before the big reveal, so here are the Dishonorable mentions. Battleship. Too much of an advanced force for Pop. Paper Mario Sticker Star. Too far removed from a series and RPGs in general. Logic Machines. Confusing gameplay and bland story. Violent Wingers Resort. Boring and bad controls. And Typo Man. Cool concept, but executed horribly. <laughs> This is it. The most disappointing piece of filth I have ever played. This is a game that combines ugly graphics, future controls, a stupid story, and a grand feeling of dissatisfaction. And that game is none other than Nobunaga's Ambition! Why did I get this game? WHY DID I GET THIS GAME?! Nobunaga's Ambition is considered one of the greatest hits in Japan, but when I put this festering course in my poor NES, I was left with one of the most atrocious and deep all games I've ever experienced! So where do I start with this atrocity? First off, this game just looks and sounds hideous, even for NES standards. The graphics wouldn't pass for an epic Vision game, and the music just makes my ears cringe. 
But this game wouldn't be number one if it were just that. I haven't even talked about the menu screen. The menu screen of all things. You know there's something seriously wrong when the menu screen of all things has problems. The options given do very little to help you play and more importantly win the game and there's no in-game explanation that a second page of options even exists. I'm dead serious. The only way I found out there was a second page of options in the menu was by pure accident. The battles aren't any better either. Moving your units is confusing and frustrating, combat is tedious, and the whole experience is overall just disturbing. Thankfully, the developers learned the lesson and remade the game for the Super NES, fixing most of the problems I had mentioned and setting the foundation for the game that Japan truly loves. But by then, the damage was done, and this abomination of a video game had to exist. I don't need to say anything else. There are absolutely no redeeming qualities for this game, and there never were. I'm the Blazing Lord Vesta, and this is my grand debut. The only dungeon in this game is the Dragon's 31 Tower Floor. <laughs> tower Floor. <laughs> That's a floor that's 31 towers tall. <laughs> okay, okay let's, let's try it again. <laughs> 